Today I want to introduce you to another nice feature from the Profex toolbox. It's the electron density map dialog, which can be used to draw pictures like this or this from our refined structures. In a retrial refinement, we start from a known model of the crystal structure. The software then calculates a theoretical diffraction pattern and compares it to the measured one. If there are any mismatches in diffracted intensities, it optimizes the structural parameters, for example the cell parameters or atomic coordinates, and repeats the comparison until the mismatches are minimized. So we always have to start from a crystal structure model in direct space and convert it to a diffraction pattern in reciprocal space using a Fourier transformation. We never go in the other direction and directly reconstruct the structure from the diffraction pattern. This is not possible because we can only measure the amplitude of the structure factors, but not their phase. But once we have a reasonably good idea of the structure topology, it is possible to reconstruct the atomic positions from the diffraction data using a Fourier synthesis, which is the inverse of a Fourier transformation. What we actually reconstruct is the electron density distribution within the unit cell, because the X-rays are scattered at the electron shells of the atoms. Let me show you how to create and visualize such electron density maps in Profex. First we need to create a refinement project in which all phases have been identified and refined. I have a project with two phases here. The main phase is hydroxyapatite and there is a small amount of beta tricalcium phosphate or beta TCP. As you can see, all the peaks are assigned to either of the two phases and the refinement looks uh, relatively good, but if we look closely at the intensities of hydroxyapatite, for example here or here, there's still quite some mismatch. So for this reason, this is a very good example to, to demonstrate how electron density maps work, as we will see later on. So to create the electron density map, we first go to our refinement control file and on the structure reference, so for hydroxyapatite, it's apatite oh.str, we click on this file and uh, click the right mouse button. And from the context menu, we select add res out and fcf out file. What this does is it adds two keywords, fcf out and res out and this instructs BGMN to create two output files after the refinement completed. These two files will be required for the calculation of the electron density distribution. So now we repeat the refinement. The goodness of it is exactly the same as before, because we did not change the refinement strategy, we only instructed BGMN to create two more output files that will be required now, when we compute the uh, electron density map. So to actually compute the map, we go to the tools menu and select electron density map. This will open a new dialog, we can resize it and also maximize the, the painting area here. And now with the first button on the top left cor in the top left corner, we can open one of these files, the FCF file. It will always open the file dialog in the active project. So we have this newly created file and we open it. And now it will immediately calculate the electron density map. So what we see here is the electron uh, density distribution in the unit cell on a cross section uh, in the AB plane. We can see the axis AB and uh, hydroxyapatite is a hexagonal structure. That's why we can see the, the typical 120 degrees angle here. Um, and the first cross section is drawn at a Z coordinate of zero. So it goes through the origin and X and Y coordinates just follow the cursor as we move it here. So down here is the origin at 0, 0, 0. This is uh, coordinate 1, 1, 0. And we can scroll through the unit cell along the Z axis, the Z axis, 
uh, by using this slider over here. So as we move the slider up, the Z coordinate goes up. We can also use the scroll wheel to quickly scroll through the cell. So we can draw cross sections at the different levels along the C axis. Here we see the scale, the grayscale of, of electron density. White values represent high density and black values uh, low density, actually negative density, so zero is gray. And as you can see, the calcium atoms pop out. There's, these are fairly heavy compared to oxygens. So there's a high density of electrons around uh, at the location of the calcium atoms. A very important uh, parameter for the Fourier synthesis is this box, the synthesis box up here. Now we have selected FOPS, which means that we are using the observed structure factors to reconstruct the electron densities. So if we look at the diffraction pattern, especially where we find mismatches, so here where we have two peaks with um, intensity mismatches between observed and calculated intensities, we have now used the observed ones, the measured intensities, to reconstruct these electron densities. We can change this to F calculated. So now we will be using the ones from the calculated diffraction pattern, this intensity. We have to, we don't have to reload the file but we have to recalculate the electron density map with this data. So we have to click here, recalculate electron density map, because we changed this setting. And now we see um, the electron densities calculated from the calculated structure factors. We don't see much of a difference compared to the, the observed uh, F uh, structure factors, but um, we can choose the third option. This is actually the most interesting option here. We can visualize the difference between the observed and the calculated uh, structure factors. So again, we if we change this setting, we have to recalculate the electron density map here. And now it looks very different. So now what we see here is actually visualizing the difference in electron densities originating from the mismatch in intensity here in the diffraction pattern. So this will help us to identify the reason for this mismatch. We can scroll along the z-axis here and look out for any uh, high, so white or black areas. This, uh, these are the areas of strong positive or negative electron density mismatch between the two structures, the calculated and the observed one. And in this grayscale mode, it's a bit difficult to see. So we can maybe use a different color map instead of grayscale. For example, false color um, here. If we change it, we have to we don't have to recalculate the electron density map, but we have to re-render the image files. So on the, the electron density map is still the same, but we want to regenerate the images here. Now we have a false color representation and we are looking for red or blue areas. And these are now very obvious. Around the calcium-2 atom we have an excess, so the observed structure has more electrons here than our calculated structure and in the origin down here it's a bit hidden by the labels we can hide labels and the atom outline we have a negative um, area so our uh, calculated structure has more electrons than the observed one so that's that's again Calcium 2, probably. Yeah, so the most obvious difference is in Calcium 2. And in one of the next tutorials, we will learn how to refine structural parameters, atomic coordinates, uh, site occupancy factors, thermal displacement parameters, and so on, to improve the refinement of this particular structure. But just to show a little bit more here, um, what we can do with these options on the left side, 
we already saw that we can toggle the drawing of uh, atom labels, atom outlines, and also the axis down here can be shown or hidden. We can select the projection direction. So now we are looking on the AB plane. Along, we are looking along the C axis. If we change this, um, we have to recalculate the uh, density map and also re-render the images. So now we are looking from the side and we don't recognize the hexagonal structure anymore, obviously, because now we are looking at the 90 degrees angle. Um, but sometimes this is more helpful. For example, now we can see what's going on in, uh, in the, along the z-axis in the origin, the negative uh, electron density we observed before. And the third one is the same in a hexagonal structure looks exactly the same. So we can look at it from different directions. The color maps, um, we already saw that we can toggle from grayscale to false colors. There are some a bit more artistic ones like the bright glow. Also easy to recognize strong positive and negative differences. And some of them have contours you can also see it from from the scale right here. So either just contours or even with contour lines, uh, black lines along uh, the, the contours like this one. So whatever is easiest to recognize the differences or, or the levels of the uh, electron densities can be selected here. The range is also important now um, we have a range from uh, 1.39 to minus 1.39 electron volt. We can change it here to something else. And we have to recalculate. No, actually, we only have to regenerate the images, not recalculate. It will be reset when we recalculate the electron density map. So we only regenerate the images. And now we have a scale from 2. 0.04 to minus 2.04. So this is helpful if we want to compare improvements of structure refinements. Um, so we, we can use we can force it to use the same scale and better see how this uh, map improves and gets more and more flat as our refinement improves. To summarize again, these three buttons up here. The first one is to open a specific uh, FCF file from one of our structures. If we open the file, it will immediately calculate the electron density map and render the images. So we only have to open the file. If we already have it open and we repeat the refinement here, change something in the structure, we only have to recalculate the electron density map. We don't have to specifically open the file anymore. Or if we only change the color map, nothing in the actual electron densities, we can only recreate or re-render the images like this. The next three buttons are obviously to save these images to, to some uh, image file, or this the second one is to save all layers. We can save all images. And here we have some settings. Um, the, the, the resolution of the electron density map and also the image resolution, it's not very high right now, so I could, I could improve it, for example, by factor two, and recreate my images. Of course, the larger the images get, the, the longer the rendering takes, but you can immediately see how the resolution improves. And here on the plotting area, we can use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out, drag it with the left mouse button, and right mouse button is uh, reset, zoom and fit to the viewport as always. And we can also choose between different interpolation levels um, and anti-aliasing to smooth the image, but it will also get a lot slower, but the image quality will be much better. So now if we zoom in, uh, the contour lines are now smoothed a little bit and the image looks nicer. 
We can work on our refinement projects even while this dialog is open. So we have access to our refinement project back here. And we can, for example, move this dialog to a second screen um, and always keep it open. And as soon as a refinement completes, we can recalculate the, the electron densities and render the new images. So this is how electron density maps work in Profect. It's very easy and very convenient if we try to refine the crystal structure and we don't know where to look for improvements, which parameter might be worth refining. We can very easily locate areas uh, of mismatches specifically in position and site occupancies of atoms, individual atomic sites. And I will release a tutorial soon showing exactly how we do this and we will make heavy use of this electron density map dialog. So stay tuned, the new tutorial should come out soon and I hope to see you next time.